Today we have the poem Funeral Blues by W.H. Auden. Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone. So the very starting of the poem is by orders, commands. We see the use of imperative sentences. The poet is telling, he is giving, he is issuing an order by saying, stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone and even prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone. Silence the pianos and with muffled drum, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. So the words bring out the coffin shows us that this is about death. The author is talking about death and he says, let the mourners come out. But before that, we see the use of imperative verbs that is stop, cut, prevent, silence. All these bring out, all these are orders. So imperative words, imperative sentences. Now, why does the poet want everyone to be quiet? Here we see that the poet wants to show respect to the person who has died. He wants the whole world, he wants the people around him to respect his feelings towards the deceased. So the clocks must be stopped. There was also a Victorian tradition where in the house of a deceased, the clocks would be stopped for the day as if to show that time would not pass without that individual. The telephone would also be kept aside so that no ringing sounds should interrupt the funeral. And even the dog is made to stay aside. But only one thing is allowed, that is the muffled drum. The drum beat or the muffled drum is something that is uh, the music that is given while the mourners come or when the coffin is being brought out. Let airplane circle morning overhead, scribbling on the sky the message, he is dead. Put crepe bows around the white necks of the public doves. Let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. So here, with this very powerful imagery, with these kind of metaphors, Auden shows us the intensity, the immensity of grief. The most vivid character of the poem so far is grief. And the first paragraph we saw that he was talking on an individual level that is about a private grief that is happening in the family. Now the second stanza talks about a public grief. He is saying that let the aeroplane circle around overhead and let them scribble in the sky, let them leave the, knee, the words. He is dead. Let them proclaim to the whole world that this person has died and let the whole world respect it and go into mourning. He says, put crib bows, silken black and bows around the white necks of the public doves. Even the birds, those doves who are messengers, let them also wear this black in order to show the message to the world that he is dead. Let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. So everyone, the poet wants everyone to show respect to the dead, dead person. He also wants respect to be shown to his grief. He was my north, my south, my east and west, my working week and my Sunday rest. So here we see a great deal of emotion. And also a very, the possessive pronoun of my is used in order to show the importance. My north, my south, my east, my west, my working week, my Sunday rest. So whoever it is who has passed away is so important to the poet that his life has come to a standstill. That person was the entirety of his world. Was his Sunday rest, was the reason why he worked during the week, was the reason why he rested on Sunday. 
So it is such a person who is now going away from his life. The poetic device enjambment is also used because one idea proceeds into the other. The next line. My noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. He was my noon, he was my midnight. He was the reason I woke up in the night and spoke and talked long into the night. He was perhaps the person who kept the secrets of our poet. He was my talk, my song. I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. So here the poet says that he thought that his love would last forever. But no, the world has changed it. Circumstances has, have stolen this love away from him. So the stars are not wanted now. Put out everyone. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. So now we see hyperbole. The poet is making extreme orders, outrageous commands. He says, the stars, the stars are not wanted anymore in this world in which he does not exist. Pack it up. Put it out. Put those lights out. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. We do not need the heavenly objects for the love, the light of my life has gone. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the woods. For nothing now can ever come to any good. He says, the very ocean should be poured away. The world is going to cease to exist for me. For nothing now will ever come to any good. So this is, a, this is an elegy. It is a poem, Mourning. And this is one of the finest poems in English literature in which grief is expressed so deeply. This is a poem which, you know, it, it melts the heart of the reader and we feel the intensity of grief. How poignant is grief and the person who has to deal with it. So this was a poem written right after the First World War. Imagine the homes of soldiers, imagine those homes where the breadwinner, the soldier, the father, the husband or the son passes away. At the same time, look at it in the eyes of a lover, one who has lost the love of their life, to know that their lover will never come back, never embrace them. So this poem has been used innumerable times during funerals. The poem became very famous in the movie Four Weddings and a Funeral. And uh, after this movie, which was in 1994, the sale of Auden's poems rose a hundredfold. He was al already a very famous poet, but the movie and so many dramas, several plays, everywhere this poem has been used over and over. It was initially written as a poem to grieve the death of a politician and uh, that is why Odin has used hyperbole in it. He is asking the whole world to participate in the grief. That was in his uh, poem Ascent of F6 that it first came out in 1938 and on multiple occasions it has been used. It has been converted into song, into the form of a song. Now, the word funeral, of course, denotes death. And this death could be a metaphorical death also. That is, the death of ideals, the death of, could be the death of love. It could be about heartbreak. Has the poet lost the love of his life? Has the poet's love abandoned him? Because the words, I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. Has somebody broken a promise and gone away from the poet? In that case, the tombstone is erected over a love relationship. Or it can also be the very simple meaning of actual death. Mourning for one who has passed away. So, so many meanings are, you know, put into these words. And uh, we need to know that after the First World War, so many ideals also faced death. 
Now the word blues, funeral blues, the word blues comes from a genre of music that had its origin in African American literature or rather from the south of America. They, they were ballads, there were, uh, you know, um, songs which talked about the grief of slaves, about the songs that were sung in the cotton fields of workers. You know, it originated, so it has very, very deep African uh, American tones in it, but it became a genre of American music. So that blues, which has so much of spirituality and so much of sadness, that word is used by our poet. So this is funeral blues. W.H. Auden was a British poet. He was a poet during the interwar period, that is between the First World War and the Second World War. We can say that his poetry is very significant in showing the change of that period. The interwar poets dealt with the depression of the period, the economic crisis that was faced by various nations. The rule, the government all faced a lot of changes during the, that period. And uh, class distinctions, gender differences, there was a change in all these fields. Women came to the forefront to work during the interwar period where men had lost lives, women had to come to the forefront and class distinctions also disappeared. People were no longer, you know, divided into the gentle blood or, you know, those of the lower classes. The war brought all people together and death and mourning were the same for everyone. And uh, Auden, you know that uh, we have already learned that Siegfried Sassoon or uh, and uh, many war poets who passed away during the, the there have been cases of uh, poets who have passed away during the first world war at that time there was a great deal of sadness and you know pe poets were asking people to bring back peace now when you look at wh Auden, there is this depression or this sadness along with it there is a defiance a spirit of a revolutionary also so even in this form, we see that from the beginning, we see a person who is trying to take charge, trying to control his emotions because he is not uh, collapsing under the grief. We see that he is issuing orders. He is asking or making outrageous demands, telling the world to stop and, you know, participate in his grief or respect his grief. But towards the end of the poem, we see that this person is weak at heart. This person knows that there is, you know, he is not strong. He is trying to put up a brave front, a front of defiance. But in the last words, we see pour away the ocean and sweep up the woods. We see the poignancy of grief and how the poet says at the end of it, nothing new, nothing good can come anymore. Seamus Perry, an English scholar, even says that the fact that uh, Auden has not matched the words woods and good. If it were wood and good, it would be rhyming. But he says that the very rhyme scheme is distorted. As if the rhyme scheme itself has gone through grief. So, you know, that is the level of depth of grief in this poem. Emily Dickinson in her poem... In one of her poems, she says, I measure every grief I meet in order to know if it is as great as mine. So grief is something in life which everybody will encounter. Every human being is going to pass through loss of love, loss of life. But even a little child would encounter the loss of a pet. Children who are moving from one place to another would encounter the loss of a home. And when we think of refugees, they incur the loss of their homeland. So, you know, loss is a part of life. And I believe that this poem, what it makes us really think is, how far can we relate to this grief? How do we empathize with this grief? And I feel that the poet 
is telling us that we do not need to swallow our grief we do not need to move on so quickly but i think we need to respect grief we need to allow ourselves to process it forgive ourselves and process that grief until we can face the world again thank you